Hey! Good morning, my friends. Good morning, good morning. Got my cup of coffee. The car's nice and warm and ready to go, and I gotta go to work. Hmm. This is different. Interesting. I like. Sorry, I, I just, the, the scruffy face just isn't my thing. Mm. I was going to shave it off a long time ago. And I tried actually a couple of times. But uh, my son, darn him, kept throwing these big hissy fits about it. Oh, don't do it. <coughs> and then when I finally did it, he's like, cool, dude. Frickin' turd is what he is. So... Okay, let's see, let's get out of here. So last night we had another, oh, probably half an inch of snow, maybe close, close to an inch, not, not a lot, but we've had, we've had probably a couple of feet of snow so far. It's been pretty crazy, uh, but I think... I don't know if it's some of it's melted or what so I don't know if you all could tell by my last couple of videos that's a shitty accent sorry I mean crappy accent sorry I mean horrible okay but my last couple of videos have been uh, this new thing I'm doing uh, keto with cast iron now uh, I'm just kind of playing with it right now and uh, and I can go and I will go more in depth and I'll be in front of the camera and a bunch of other stuff um, but I, just something I'm kind of playing with and I'm kind of looking for ideas and suggestions so um, I'm actually thinking about starting my whole uh, a whole new channel uh, keep Keto is ketosis, keto, whatever. It, it's uh, been around for a long while, uh, but it's just now starting to get real popularity. Um, and uh, it's something that the wife and I have been doing on and off for the last five or six years. And so I've decided that it would be kind of fun to put together uh, basically cooking videos. Now, the the first three, and I haven't released the, the third one yet, but the first three are more or less trial, run, see if, um, see if I like it, don't like it. I'll be putting some voiceover in some of it. Um, in the future and I'll be um, you know talking to the camera and all that kind of stuff too so they'll be extended out um, I'm thinking about 15 minute videos um, I just did this quick little um, you know how to clean it how to do this and that and just simple little things but um, I will be doing more than that uh, and in more in depth and why I do things the way I do and all that kind of stuff. But basically cast iron. So, okay. So cast iron, in my opinion, is one of the best things you can cook or, you know, pots, pans, that kind of thing. It's the best ones you can cook with. Um, and the reason I believe that they're, they're one of the best is very simple. Um, as you cook with it, it does release some iron into the food and so it increases your iron intake but it doesn't release a bunch of nasty horrible disgusting chemicals a lot of these new pots and pans and they're always coming out with new you know um, things to put on the pan so that it doesn't stick and all this other crud I have tried over the years I've tried the ceramic pans I've tried the um, stainless steel, which I like stainless steel pans are good for, um, some things, 
I wouldn't fry anything with a stainless steel pan personally. Um, I just find a lot of sticking going on. But for, you know, doing pastas and stuff that has a lot of water content, they, they do okay. Um, but with a lot of the new pots and pans, they're, they got this, uh, this new one out, copper or something, and all these. They're always changing the chemicals and the structure and the makeup of the non-slick surface. They're also always changing the, the, the material they make the pan out of. And I've tried a lot over the years, and they're all the, pretty much the same over a period, especially the, the ceramic ones, over a period of time, um, even if you do it the way they're told, they tell you to do it and, and follow the instructions, they become these food magnets and they just hold on to everything and, and they kind of go against the grain, the, the opposite, opposite of what they're supposed to do, which is supposed to be a non-stick pan. They end up like almost purposely going out of their way to stick onto your food. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Um, and, you know, I've had people suggest, oh, oh you got to try this one. And, you know, this one's different. This one's got, you know, thicker bottom. It's got this, it's got that. I've tried tons and tons of them. I always gravitate back to the cast iron. I grew up with the cast iron. I guess that's possibly part of it. But I think the bigger part of it is with cast iron, there's... There's a certain way to take care of them. There's a certain way to, um, I don't know. It just seems more natural, more, you're, you're more in touch with your pan. You, you have a connection or emotional attachment to that tool. Um, and you, when you have cast iron, you have to, it, it is more work. Cleaning it is a pain in the butt, and draw, you have to dry it on the stove. You cannot let it air dry, it will rust. Um, you cannot soak it in water, it'll rust. Um, you know, you have something that's really stuck on, you know, soaking it overnight like you would a regular pan is not going to do it. As a matter of fact, that'll ruin your pans. So you have to, you know, put you know some effort into it. Scrape them, and and um, it's like the sponge. My favorite sponge. It's a chainmail sponge with a rubber lining in it. It's absolutely amazing. Um, that is really good for getting all the the burnt neo burnt on or stuck on stuff on. But for the most part, I rarely have any problems with stuff getting stuck to my my pans. Um, and then really, it's don't turn the heat up too high. Don't ever go above a medium heat. A medium heat on a front or on a cast iron pan is basically high. <laughs> so um, you know, I mean, go a little bit above medium, but I wouldn't go too much higher than that unless you're frying foods. So like, <clears throat> if you have a nice deep cast iron pot, for instance, and you've got oil in it, and you're gonna batter some some fish and you're gonna put some fish or some some uh, chicken or something and you're gonna get like a KFC or a um, um, Popeye's chicken style chicken then you know you want the heat to be a little bit higher because you need to be around 300 and I think it's like 320 degrees or something like that 300 degrees um, I usually keep mine around 280 um, but it's in that zone. And you'll know, and it depends too on what, what type of grease you use. Um, I personally, I try desperately to only cook with lard. Um, and, I, uh, and I'm gonna make a video on lard and, and um, how you harvest lard and how to render it and how to store it and what happens if uh, your lard goes rancid and what to do with it once it goes rancid. Which, by the way, don't ever throw it out. It's good stuff. Um, if you have lard in a mason jar, here's a cool tip. If you have lard in a mason jar um, and the seal breaks or something, because you can, you can actually can lard um, and seal it. But 
Um, and if it, you open it and it's rancid, it went bad, um, that's fine. Go and get one of them long, fancy, what do they call those? You, you see it for romantic dinners on the table. There's long candles. Uh, pillars, I think they're called pillars. And you take one of those and you put that down the middle of it, all the way to the bottom of the jar, and light it. And you have yourself a candle that will last a very, very long time. Lard will burn slow, and it burns forever. It is crazy. Um, we did this um, with a quart jar a few years back, and um, yeah, we we got. Gosh, I want to say it. It was still going. Gosh, probably like three or four months later. And we burn candles all the time, so it's definitely um, it's definitely cool. And for you know, for um, if you're like a prepper or a survivalist um, or uh, you know, stocking away stuff, you know, uh, in case there's an emergency, the power goes out for a few days or whatever. It's always kind of nice to have you know, basically a free candle. Um, so it just awesome. And I wouldn't recommend putting a like an actual wick in it um, because when the oil softens, the wick could fall. Um, so putting a can, you know actual candle in would be my way of doing it um, and my recommendation. Uh, so, but anyways, off topic. <laughs> I tend to do that a lot, don't I? <laughs> I just ramble. Mm. I'm really good at rambling. <laughs> That's what I do best. Um, so I've been doing a lot of these these videos, um, and and I'm preparing to do a lot more um, of the um, of, of cast iron and, and keto and and that kind of stuff. And I'm just trying to decide if I'm gonna just make this a playlist and just make this something else on my channel that I do or make a whole new channel, uh, which I, I don't think, I really am kind of leaning against it. The wife and I, we've been discussing it. We're, we're actually, we've actually closed down two channels that we were doing, um, just because we just, um, uh, not getting the, the views, we're not getting the people interested, and so some of the stuff that we do, like, uh, the wife's book corner, she, um, she reads books and then she does reviews on the books and she is talking about, uh, doing a couple of more, but instead of doing them on her book chair, her channel, uh, it's called, uh, Shantae's book corner or something like that. Instead of doing them on her channel, she's thinking about doing them over here on this channel. Um, and, um, and getting some people's opinions on if that's what they would like to see or if she needs to not do it or change it or whatever. So, um, 2019 is definitely a year for growth and change. Um, doing a thing, a lot of things differently this year. That's for sure. Uh, this is our first, going to be our first full year in the new house. Um, and... I spent a huge portion of last year trying to get the yard, for instance, done. And I've got, like, the garden space where I, the actual garden is going. It is so far from being done. I, I, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy this year. It will not be finished. And I'm going to do the best I possibly can with what I have. And that's all there is to it. Um, I have tons of projects inside the house that um, I'm working on right now. And for the last month, since the snow started, um, outside projects have come to a complete standstill. Just, there's, I can't do, like, I'm, I'm in the process of building a chicken coop, but I can't do it. <laughs> the, um, uh, there's just snow, there's snow on the ground. I can't, I can't, uh, 
just it's impossible to do in the snow. I have to wait for this stuff to go away before I can build a chicken coop. Um, I got another week left. Well, almost oh, was it a week and a half. I got about a week and a half left, uh, and then my chickens are going to arrive. Now, okay, so I'm thinking about having end result having anywhere between eight to six chickens. Uh, I think uh, at least for my first year, I think um, eight to six would be somewhere in there would be a good number uh, to start with. Uh, just because the production in the garden isn't going to be there this year. I, I mean, I'm going to be able to produce some stuff in the garden, but it won't be anywhere near what I need in order to be self-sufficient on the chicken food uh, for the majority of the year. So, if I, I and I'm going to end up this first year, I'm going to have to supplement their food with, um, you know, chicken, um, chicken scratch and, and chicken feed and that kind of stuff. Um, and it's supplement, but uh, I'm going to have to do that this year. I'm hoping um, next year I won't have to. I, I might give a little bit here and there. Might give them some. Um, corn or something, but I'm not going to go uh, crazy, uh, hopefully next year. Uh, in the winter time is a different story. There's just nothing coming out of the garden in the winter here. Um, I would like to put in some carrots and beets and kale and uh, that kind of thing to um, try to have something for the winter next year, but I don't know. I will play it by ear. That's kind of a ways away still. So they're coming on March 1st. Uh, last weekend, I started building... Um, I did a lot last weekend. But I started building the brooder uh, last weekend. And um, it's not done. I still got more. I guess still got to do the top. Make the top for it. Uh, I'm going to make a double-sided top. So there'll be a spot where the the heat lamp goes um, that won't open. I'll have to reach underneath the heat lamp to, to clean it out, um, but um, the heat lamp will be mounted above that space. Um, I'm going to be getting some, hopefully on Friday, I'll be getting some hardware cloth, uh, some hinges, and a couple of latches um, because I've got to make this basically cat proof uh, just in case the cat and so I'm, I'm putting this in my theater um but just in case the cat gets in that room uh when i'm not paying attention or somebody accidentally lets the cat in or whatever or a dog i doubt a dog though dogs don't go downstairs um there'll be a little more protection for um for them so they they'll they'll be safer hopefully the other thing uh, I'm looking into and thinking about, so Rhode Island Reds, I definitely want to do Rhode Island Reds, but I'm, I'm, they're not called Bantams. Bantams are the small chickens. There's, um, there's another breed. Uh, it's an all black chicken and it's got a um, little red on, on its head. And I'm thinking about getting a couple of those as well. So probably six Rhode Islands and two of those. That's what I'm thinking about getting because um, we do have hawks in our area and um, the, the hawks um, sometimes mistaken these blackbirds as being uh, crows and I guess hawks are afraid of crows or they don't like them or something. So that's, um, that's kind of the idea and the thought process. And so I'm looking at that. Now, next year I might try another breed or a couple of more other breeds. Uh, but this year it's really getting my, it's all about getting my first year under my belt, uh, is kind of the plan. The other thing I want to do is I want to make, um, a little documentary this year. So I'm gonna go from March to March, uh, March 1st to March 1st of uh, to the, or 2020. And I want to make little 
videos, update videos and watch them grow and that kind of stuff. Things I've learned, things I've done. Um, and yeah, make a little documentary, um, you know, probably an hour long or whatever. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm thinking about filming a documentary. Hey, it's just something I'm thinking about. I don't know um, if I'm going to be able to do it. It's a big project and it would take a lot of time to process and say, okay, well, today I got to do, a, I got to set up a calendar and a schedule and I, I got to film this, film this, film this, film this, and then I have to put them on my computer and put them where they belong and store them and hold on to them. And, and still trying to make it comical and funny and happy and all this kind of stuff and editing. And, but I'm, <clears throat> I, uh, I think that'd be kind of fun. Um, for, you know, I just, and I, I got to find a name for it, but you know, first year with chickens or, you know, um, the, the experience of chickens or something like city boy, city boy grows chickens or raises chickens. Oh, something. But, um, yeah. So anyways, uh, I'm here at work, so I'm gotta, gotta go and let you go and I'll talk to you guys later. And, uh, until next time, I want you all to have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day and live life a little bit and uh, bye for now. Toodles!